dating is very social cue kind of game, you know? And so if you're somebody who struggles already with social cues in general, it just kind of makes it a bit of a challenge to work out, is this person actually interested in me or not? And, you know, how do you end that first date? Is there more, is there not more? I think you just get really caught up in those questions with a greater anxiety, I would say, than the general population. Um, because not only are you just worrying about the usual butterflies and all of that, you're also worrying about all your usual social cue challenges and understanding that dynamics. And because a lot of it's so shaped by societal sort of like standards and all of that, you know, you feel compelled to act in that neurotypical way where, you know, actually sometimes success in dating is just be yourself with all your weird quirks and stuff. But people will just forgive you really for that, like if they're the right person, I suppose. Yeah, some of the common difficulties that people have, number one is just meeting people. And I think that can be really, really complex for people, particularly if they have social anxiety, they desire a relationship and want to have a relationship with somebody, but it's sometimes just that very, very first step. Either joining in a group face to face can be really complex, or online dating is a minefield. Um, and sometimes that can be really complex for people to start that process. So some of the common issues with dating is, first off, it's a social situation and autistic people find that no one's given them the roadmap, the rules for how social interactions work. So it can be a bit of a mystery. Add dating in, into that mix, it's emotionally, there's more on the line, like from an evolutionary point of view, we're really sensitive to rejection and how much that impacts our self-esteem. Why is dating an issue? First off, it's highly anxiety provoking and we're, we're, we're being judged. And we may have had a history of being judged in a negative way during the primary school years and high school years. We can have a lot of negativity that it's gonna go bad. What's the point? I should just stay at home and, and not even try. Uh, so I think there's a negative bias that can be there. Rejection's part of relationships. It's actually part of learning even from a very, very early age, we have to learn about friendships and people leaving us and the movement between different groups of people. What I sometimes find is that many of the people that I work with, because they may have been isolated from sort of developing friendships and then they really, really desperately want a partner, um, they can sometimes think the first person they meet is gonna be the love of their life. But actually learning rejection is part of being human. Sometimes you just have to learn the hard way where you go, okay, this person reacted in this way. You have to manually process and go, maybe that wasn't what I should say. Or you talk to your neurotypical friends and you go, okay, that probably wasn't really what I should have done there. I think having that external feedback from others and uh, just observing others and making that logical deduction, I suppose, even though it might sound really manual and robotic, but that's just, again, it's the challenges we have. It's okay, because then that just helps you to kind of like learn better each time. I mean, I feel like that's it. Dating is just like anything. It's just, it's just it's also something that is kind of a skill to practice as well. Um, but, you know, I think dating doesn't have to be just your usual go out to coffee or, or at a cafe or go to a date at a noisy restaurant. I mean, God, that is, that is the worst place, <laughs> you know. I mean, like not to say I haven't been to bars and stuff, but I always find it's just better to go to places that are just obviously environmentally wise are going to be so much better for you. There are two main challenges. The first challenge is understanding what others want and need if, if those wants and needs are very different to yours. And that also goes along with understanding what's appropriate in a situation. The second major challenge is that m what I need may not be what someone else is accustomed to dealing with. So in my personal example, I don't do text messages at all. Someone might say, oh, you didn't, you haven't responded to my text message in 30 minutes, what's wrong? Sometimes having those kind of conversations about not everybody texts back in 30 minutes or even does text at all. It was easier sometimes back in 1800s where you had much, you know, formalized rules for courtship. Whereas today it's casual, it's more casual, it's, Oh, we shouldn't, you know, don't call it a date. Just say we're going to hang out. It's really confusing. There's a lot of unwritten rules there. The, the hard part is that dating is really difficult for all of us because it's about back and forth. It's about reciprocal communication with somebody. Now, that doesn't matter whether you're autistic or not. 
It's learning how to give enough information that the other person knows things about you, but also listening enough so you gain information about somebody else. So the most important first step is that you've got to give yourself time to get over the anxiety of first meeting somebody so that you can be calm enough to share. It's a natural human thing to assume that everyone else is like you. So I had to be really upfront about this is the kind of communication that I like and that I'm okay with. No, I'm not going to text back straight away. I absolutely hate those kind of really slow, I'll send a message, you'll send a message back, I'll send a message, you'll send a message back. And like, can we just either get on the phone or can I turn my phone off? I think you need to have a trusted person who can be a bit of a mentor when it comes to dating. So that could be a professional, but it also could be a trusted friend, sibling. Some people feel comfortable to talk with their parents about this stuff, so that can be useful. Just as a second opinion, particularly you don't want to rush things. Unfortunately, there are predators out there, so whether it's men or women, you do want to take things slow with that potential partner and have a second opinion before you, know, you move out with them before financial stuff gets exchanged and all that sort of stuff. So I think it is safe to have a, have a second opinion or third opinion. I recommend online dating for people that feel confident about going on online dating and, I feel, and also people that understand that not everybody on online dating is exactly who they say that they are. Sometimes it can be really complex for people who take everybody at face value and have very open hearts to that and then they can be very hurt when the person that they believe they're meeting online isn't actually the person they say that they are. Some of the autistic people I work with find that really absurd that somebody would actually say they're somebody but it's not really who they are. Again, from an emotional intelligence perspective, autistic people need to get better at guessing when we don't know all the answers. So if you have a bad feeling about someone, or someone doesn't make you feel comfortable, or someone doesn't seem like they understand you, or doesn't seem like they're listening to you, you're probably right, and you can find someone who does understand you, does listen to you, does take you seriously, does actually want to get to know the real you. Another thing people find is that they have a certain uh, rigid ideal person in mind. They need to have certain interests in order for it to work. And so having flexibility around, well, they might have this interest with me that's common, but they don't have my exact political views, so it's just not gonna work. Uh, so that flexibility can be a tricky thing as well, which is similar in friendship. And that's why we probably say, friendship is the basis of a good relationship. Dating is, developing a friendship with someone and then adding the intimacy on top. If you are looking for an intimate romantic relationship with somebody else, start with a friendship. Every single person that comes to see me, if they say, I want a girlfriend, I want a boyfriend, I want a partner, the very first question I will say to them is, tell me about your friends or tell me about your one friend. Because all of the skills you need, the base skills for having an intimate relationship you're developing friends. It just flushes out the people who clearly would be compatible, right? If they can't even accept your autism, then maybe they're not the right person. You, you need, the right person will accept you for who you are. People are at their best when they are doing the things they love and talking about the things that they love. No matter what your interest is, if you can find a like-minded person that is into the same thing, then that is the beginning and the blossoming of something wonderful.